Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome this morning, wherever you're joining us from, whether you're uh, around Kingsworth Lakefield in the parish or further afield, and for those of you who are with us here in the church this morning. It's a great joy to be with you this morning as we celebrate this fifth Sunday in the season of Easter. The first time I've celebrated Eucharist since before Easter, so it's uh, special and significant for me, but although slightly strange, uh, but, uh, but it's good to be with you this morning. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that being dead to sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, to whom whom all hearts are are open, all all desires are known, and and from whom whom no secrets are hidden, plant the doors of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we join the song of the angels as we say together, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, almighty God the Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. Ever-living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, beginning at verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witness laid their coat at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 31 can be found on page 250 of the prayer book. Page 250, Psalm 31. We read verses 1 to 5 and then 17 and 18. 
1 to 5, 17 to 18. Let us say it together. To you, Lord, have I come for shelter. Let me never be put to shame. O oh, deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and be swift to save me. Be for me a rock of refuge, a fortress to defend me. For you are my strong, high rock and my stronghold. Lead me and guide me for your name's sake. Bring me out of the net that they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord God of truth. All my days are in your hand. O oh, deliver me from the power of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. The second reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war within a, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for sin. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honour the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters. Not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating or do wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges just, justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed for you were like sheep going astray but now you have returned to the sheep shepherd and overseer of your soul.
Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think it was uh, Marcus Borg, uh, the writer, who once said, if you want to know what God looks like wearing sandals, look at Jesus. If you want to know what God looks like wearing sandals, look at Jesus. And it seems to me that's not a bad summary of what Jesus was saying in that passage from John's Gospel this morning. If you want to know what God looks like in sandals, look at Jesus. John was writing towards the end of the first century or early second century, depending on the scholar you read, to a people who were much like us at the moment in some ways. He was writing to a frightened people, people who knew what it was like when the world seemed to close in, people who knew what it's like when someone they love has left or is going. People who felt just as the disciples did when Jesus left them that one last time. In times and places like that, much like our own time, when people are grieving, when people are afraid, when people are unsure of what the future holds, People have a hard time hearing much of anything that's said. They wonder what's going to happen to them. They wonder what's going to happen to the people who are dear to them. And into all of that, 
You know, Jesus speaks these words. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. I go and prepare a place for you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. They're words that we all want to hear because we all want to know that there's room for us, that there's a place for us now and there's a place for us one day, that we won't be left on the outside and that we might know the way in. And Jesus says, I am that way. I'm the way to get there. So John writes this gospel to comfort those friends of his who were afraid, who needed assurance. And so it's a deep sadness that we often use these words, these verses from John's gospel, we often use them not to comfort one another, as John's community might have been comforted and as we might be comforted, but we often use these words to make people who don't believe in Jesus or don't believe in Jesus the way we do or read the Bible the way we do or talk about the faith in the way we do. We often use these words as a weapon to make them feel as if they are on the outside and that they couldn't possibly find a way in. We use these words to exclude people rather than to comfort people. We use these verses too often like a weapon against all those who threaten our particular way of believing. We have the truth. We have the way. And we're living the life. And as for the rest of you, well, there's only one way to heaven and that's our way. It's a very different way of hearing those words to the inclusive comforting words of Christ and to those words Jesus might respond you want to know the way the only way a sower went out to sow and scattered good seed everywhere everywhere a man found weeds growing in his wheat field and he said leave them there let them grow a man had a son who stayed at home and kept all the rules and another who wished he was dead and left home and acted as if he was and the man loved them both. I'm the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for his sheep and who has sheep who aren't even part of this fold and yet they belong to me as well. That's the way that I am. That's the truth that I am. That's the life that I am. And in amongst all of these things, Jesus tries to comfort us. John wants us to hear those words and to know again that the way into wherever all of us need to be, the way in is a lot broader and wider a lot more welcoming, a lot more generous than any of us might like to imagine and a lot wider than most of us and our faith allow it to be. And the bother is embracing that way comes with significant cost. But it also brings life in abundance. You know, the poet Charles Bukowski in his great poem, All the Way, says, this way will be better than anything else you can imagine. And if you're going to try, go all the way. There's no other feeling like that. You'll be alone with the gods and the nights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. All the way. You will ride life straight to perfect laughter. It's the only good fight there is. Seems to me that the life of Christ, 
was and is a challenge to every theology and every religious practice that tries to exclude and belittle and reserve room for itself alone, a challenge to every lifestyle that presumes to think that only some have a right to what they need and that those who don't are expendable. And like the earliest disciples, we still have trouble seeing a world like that, seeing the way he was and is and the way all of us are invited to become. Perhaps we know the cost and are still too afraid. Or perhaps we still need to come to him in prayer and say, Lord, show us the way you are. Show us the way. We can say with confidence that Christ is the way, the truth and the life, not just a way, a truth and a life. The invitation for us is to see that way in as wide and generous terms as Christ did and to extend our embrace just as wide. In that way, the gospel comes as words of comfort to those who need to hear it most, uh, not as a weapon used to put others in their place. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and died. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In his kingdom, we will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us join in prayer for the world, for ourselves and each other, and for the church. At the end of each prayer, I will say, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer.
ever-living God. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to be our way, our truth and our life. In confidence, we bring to you our prayers for all your people. We pray for your world, for those who live in places scared by conflict and war, for those who live in places ravaged by disease and famine. We bring our continual prayers for the coronavirus, for all those whose lives are devastated, those who live in fear, those who bear the burden of care, those who bear the burden of making decisions about how we engage with those issues. We give thanks for all whose lives manifest your spirit of reconciliation and peace. For peacekeepers, aid workers, conservationists, and all who work for a just and sustainable world. Righteous God, dwell in us that our lives may proclaim your works. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church in places where the church struggles in the face of persecution and rejection. In places where the church is faithless, divided, and disobedient. Lord, we bring our prayers, our parish prayer. Renew in us, O oh God, the zeal of your love. Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We give you thanks for those who risk their lives so that others may hear your good news and for all who minister faithfully to your people. Faithful God, dwell in us that our lives may proclaim your works. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for our families, our friends, our parish family, for all whose work sustains those in this community. We bring special mention for mothers, and their gift of unconditional love and direction. We also remember today the 100 year anniversary of Sunday school in this suburb, giving thanks to those who gave their time, even when there wasn't a church to to support the people of this suburb. We give you thanks for those whose lives shine with your spirit of forgiveness and love, for welfare agencies and for all who in their daily lives begin, bring your love to others. Loving God, dwell in us that our lives may proclaim your works. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need. For those who know loneliness, anxiety or grief. For those who know pain or sickness. And for all who face death. 
We bring to you those we carry in our own hearts. We remember today Brett, Bill Henderson, Damien Vale, Patricia McMullen, Duncan Pegg, Kenneth Tordovan, Wendy Lindsay, Oliver, Michelle Doherty, Linda, Nola. We give you thanks for those whose lives are filled with courage in the face of adversity, and for those who bring your tenderness and consolation to others. Compassionate God, dwell in us that our lives may proclaim your works. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your followers of every age, for Stephen and all who have given their lives for you, for those whose lives have drawn others to you. We remember this week Pearl Bradford, Norma Godsell, Elsie Digweed, Florence Cameron, Betsy Beck and Betty Nowak. Lead us in your way and open us to your truth that with all your saints we may be brought to the place of ever everlasting life which you prepare for all your people. Ever living God dwell in us that in our living and at our dying we may proclaim your works. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. His kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare for our confession, let us say the prayer of approach together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Bless to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Bless to be God forever. <coughs> this holy sacrifice is offered for the glory of God and today we remember our mothers and those who have been like mothers to us. And we also I offer this holy sacrifice uh, for all those who long to be able to gather once again in our churches as the body of Christ to celebrate Eucharist uh, together in the same place. And so we keep uh, those two lots of people in mind as we uh, offer the Eucharist this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And now we give you thanks that you raised him in triumph from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Santa in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Santa in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
It is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded. Proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, God have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy things for holy people. And we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us. Amen. Amen. As we share the body of Christ in this place, I invite those of you who are at home to reflect a while on the importance of Eucharist in your own life and that deep longing that's inside us all for that time when we can gather again as the whole body of Christ in one place to give thanks and glorify our God. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life, 
In the breaking of the bread, we know the risen Christ. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Notices. Something has never changed. <laughs> notices. Notices. Not a lot of notices. Look, I, time is an interesting thing. We think of time where we are right now, but time is gone and time is coming. And whether you're watching this now or when I hand it up as a recording, you're watching it, the, the feelings are no different. It's where we are and what we go through. So I'd like to believe that today, even though people are not here in person, they are still with us in spirit. And that's the most important thing. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the fact that we remember today as part of Mother's Day, for us as a double uh, memory because today is also the 100th anniversary of Sunday school in this suburb. There was no church, there was no uh, parishioners, no priests, but people in this suburb wanted to bring faith into this suburb. They wanted to start. And where did they start? By starting a Sunday school at Hendra State School. 100 years ago, committed people made this commitment to bring Christ into the suburb. Now, we could say the church started when Clayfield decided to set up a, a service in uh, Playfair in Hendra, but really you've got to sit there and say the first start of the church in this suburb started when the people in the suburb wanted to bring it here. Whether there was a building, whether there was a priest, whether there was a service is irrelevant. The heart was moving and the spirit was moving in the suburbs. So we just give great joy for that. And 100 years just had it. Uh, I pray that you all have known. And I want to thank Bishop Jeremy for deciding to be here today and, and to do this service because it's just a blessing as well. And uh, I hadn't even thought about it um, until about a, a two or three days. And then Bishop Jeremy sent me an email saying, look, I was supposed to be with you this week, but I've sent you my reflection. And I said, well, I was thinking you could come to the church if you still wanted to do the Eucharist. He said, oh, that'd be great. So isn't that amazing? Again, the Spirit moves in amazing ways. And so I'll hand back over to Bishop Jeremy to send us out. Thanks again. Almighty God, who redeemed us through the resurrection of Christ, and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom. Give you joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. And we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed.